Okay, so today we are talking about Dashamsha principles. That is, uh, we are going to be deciphering the career of the person, what exactly the person is going to do, and uh, we are going to see the directions that the person is going to take and the challenges that the person is going to face in the career. Okay? Now, I am not going, there are certain things, you know, it's not just one division that decides. Just because Su Ang, let's say, is very good in Aikido, uh, she is teaching Aikido. I, am also, I also did a little bit of karate learning when I was young. Then one fine day, my guru they said, over. So it was over. So that doesn't mean that simply because I learned something, I can also go around teaching it, that I can make a career out of it. Many of us have learned so many things. But that doesn't mean we make careers out of everything that we learn. There are so many things we learn for the sake of our learning, for the sake of our knowing. To make a life or a career out of something is a separate issue. So here we are talking about having one an opportunity to get skills. Firstly is the person. The person is the Rashi chart, right? The person is the Rashi chart. And unless, like, the way I am going to react with the world is to be seen from my Rashi chart. My Rashi chart is going to talk about me as a person. The Navamsha chart is my destiny chart. That is going to tell me what skills I can learn, what skills I can develop, what is going to bring me luck, what are the areas that I am going to have fortune. That's the Navamsha chart. So these two charts are very crucial. Then after that is the Dashamsha chart. The Dashamsha chart is my entire working environment. After watching a nice movie in the in which you see the president, what was it? What was that movie? The, 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 it's about the U.S. president and he's fighting that. What is it? American president. I thought that maybe I should have become the American president. I would have done maybe better. <laughs> right? But that's the wishful thinking, because the Dashamsha does not give me that opportunity. Dashamsha does not throw the world, when I say Dashamsha, it's the world out there and me as a person reacting to that world. So it's an interaction between the Rashi chart and the Dashamsha chart. Dashamsha chart is going to throw those opportunities. How I react will be my Rashi chart working on my Dashamsha chart. So, we are going to be studying these principles today. Okay, let's... Now, when we talk of career, there are these chara characters, the important chara characters or the uh, uh, temporary significators that are crucial to understanding what is the nature of the soul, what the soul wants, what I can, at what depth I can work. The two chara characters are the amatya karaka, which shows the nature of the work, and then there is the dara karaka, which is the financial position. It's like, you know, working without money, working with money. Working is seen from the Amatya Karaka, with money, without money is Dara Karaka. So you see, the money factor is kept separate from the work factor. You could do a lot of work where you are not looking at money, but just because you enjoy it beautifully, you are doing it. But there could be a factor where you are doing it only because of money. If money is the major motivator, then you are looking at Dara Karaka. If, if self-actualization, you know, something you love to do, you want to do this, if that is the motivator, it is the Amatya Karaka. You observe Rahu, for example, when you, when you see the charts of politicians, you will find Rahu closely linked with the Amatya Karaka. From a soul level, they are really interested in, okay, you do this, I'll backstab him over there, I'll pull that guy out over there. You know, they, at a soul level, they are involved in that. If they are not involved at a soul level, they can't go anywhere as a politician. You want to succeed in politics, you need Rahu with your Amatya Karaka. If it is not involved, you, and the net result of all those machinations is you lose out. If, if Rahu is with your Amatya Karaka, then at the end result of all those political moves is you win. 
So that is the soul level working. At a soul level, what is victory and loss at the soul level? Victory at the soul level is acceptance. Loss at the soul level is rejection. If I lose something outwardly, that means my soul rejected it. If I win something, my soul accepted it. That is all. It is an acceptance or a rejection at the soul level. At the high level which I call it. If, if Kerry lost to Bush in the last elections, it was because at the soul level, Kerry's soul finally gave up. And Bush's soul clung on to what he had. That is Amatya Karaka working. Then we talk of the Rashi Navamsha, that is the physical abilities, the fortunes. Then Dashamsha, these are, these, these, these are the details about the work and the career. So today we are going to be studying this part, the Dashamsha. So am I clear on mm-hmm. which area I am going to focus on? So let's go ahead. Dashamsha is derived from Das, meaning ten, and Amsha, meaning division. So there are ten divisions of a sign. A sign has a longitude is how much? 30 degrees? Right? So when we divide 30 degrees by 10, how much do we get? 3 degrees each. Okay? So, now a sign of 30 degrees when divided into 10 parts is of 3 degrees each. Each sign has 10 divisions or 10 dashamshas. Okay? So the karma of 10 years and 10 signs and this 12 signs. So if each sign has got 10 years, how much karma is there in 12 signs? 120 years. And that is your maximum longevity. Do you see the connection between maximum longevity and karma? So why are you given a maximum longevity of 120 years? Because that is the maximum karma that is there in your chart. In 120 years, you will cover all the karma. That means, if there is a method by which I can progress from birth at the rate of 10 years per sign, that is, that progression will give me karma, will tell me about karma. Okay? And there is a special method to do that. That is called Sandhya Dasha. Have you heard of the word Sandhya Dasha? Please write down Sandhya Dasha. Someday in your advanced classes you will be learning. See, this is an advanced class. So I will be giving you tips that will be connecting things. So you go back and study Sandhya Dasha. What is this Sandhya Dasha? What Sandhya means? Junctions. Sandhya is junctions. Sandhya is when you do puja, the prayers. So you have a morning Sandhya where you do Aarti. Then there is a midday Sandhya. Then there is an evening Sandhya. Then there is a midnight Sandhya. The two major Sandhyas are sunrise and sunset. Sandhya is derived from the word Sandhi. Sandhi means junction. So Sandhya means that which develops from the junction of the day and night. They are called Sandhya Dashas. They are for 10 years each. And they cover the 12 signs in 120 years. Okay. Every action is karma. And a blessed life is one in which every karma is done with the right knowledge and right inspiration. Right knowledge is Mahavidya. Knowledge is Vidya. Right knowledge is Mahavidya. To have complete and perfect knowledge about something. No darkness. See, tamas is darkness, ignorance. Sattva is light, complete knowledge. So what, what is the power of the Mahavidya? The power of the Mahavidya is to remove the tamas completely and take you into perfect sattva. To have complete knowledge of something is called Mahavidya. Maha is the great. It is complete. And Right inspiration. The right inspiration to do something is very important. Without the right inspiration, 
even if you try to do it, you will fail. It will not be that perfection. That level of perfection will not be there. Right inspiration is called avatar. The das avatar. Avatar means the crossing over. Tarana, to cross over. Like Hanuman was jumping from uh, Chennai, uh, Tamil Nadu to Sri Lanka. Now, if Hanuman had jumped just like that, he would have fallen into the sea and drowned. Hanuman was able to jump across, Tarana, to cross, to jump over, because he had the name of Ram in his lips. With the strength of the name of Ram, he jumped and he crossed. So, the thus avatar means ten avatars, the ten inspirations. They help you to jump across. The crossover is smooth. You will not fall in the ocean. Am I, am I being understood in this? So, not only must you have right knowledge, you must have the right inspiration, so that you have the right energy to jump across. Thus, avatar. Again, there are ten of them. Observe. There are ten avatars and there are ten Mahavidyas. And we are talking about ten Amshas. Are you able to see that there is a possibility of a very good linkage over there? And how many Grahas do we have? Nine plus one Lagna. Ten. So you see we have a Navagraha and Lagna forming a ten group. We have a, a ten Mahavidyas and then we have ten Avatars. And then we have ten Amishas. So now, as I tell the name of a planet, can you tell me the name of the Mahavidya and the name of the Avatar? Simple? Start with the sun. Avatar? Ram. Ram. Mahavidya? Matangi. So Surya, sun, is Ram and Matangi Vidya. Okay. Moon? Krishna, Avatar, and Bhuvaneshwari Mahavidya. Those of you who don't know, please write down. If you know, it's easy for me. If you write it down, you will remember. The best memory aid is to write it down. Germany scholars who had come for my special classes in the mountains this time, have written in 15 days a few volumes. Volumes, believe me, this size notebooks. Each one of them. Their hands would hurt. They know. And, and I know that that alone, that noting alone is going to help them remember. So write it down. It's going to help you. So Bhavaneshwari, right? Then after that Mars, Narasimha and Bagalamukhi. Good. Mercury? Buddha. Buddha Avatar. Yes, Parashara says Buddha Avatar. So we accept Parashara with Buddha Avatar. And? Tripura Sundari. Okay, then Jupiter? Vamana, Shri Vamana, and Ugratara, not Tara, Tara, there are many forms. Ugratara or Nilatara. Ugratara or Nilatara. Not just Tara. Tara has many, many forms. Either Ugratara or Nilatara, one of the two. I'm being very specific for the convenience. Then after that, Shukra Venus. Parashurama, Parashara says Parashurama, we accept. Okay, and? Kamal Atmika. Okay. Then uh, Saturn? Shri Kurma. See, those of you who are not familiar with the name, say the name. It will help you familiarize yourself. Kurma. Then Kali. The specific form is Dakshina Kali. Dakshina Kali is the specific form. The Mahavidya is Dakshina Kali. There is Mahakali, there are Bhadra Kali, there is 
Kali has umpteen Raja Kali. The specific Mahavidya is Dakshina Kali. And then uh, Rahu Varaha and uh, Mahavidya Chinna Masta. Good. Very good. Chinna means cut, Masta, head. Head has been cut. This is the exact opposite of Rahu. Rahu has a head, Chinnamasta only has a body. So Rahu's head fits into Chinnamasta's body and, and Rahu is Rahu no more. See the, see the thing. Chinnamasta is the mother without a head. Her head has been cut off. So she is only the body. And Rahu is only a head. So he gets, his, he gets the body. The, so Chinnamasta has the power of giving the body for Rahu. So Rahu is Rahu no more. Rahu is finished. Think about the higher meaning. When you get the higher meaning, the, Rahu, the, the entire karma of that is over. The avidya is finished. Okay, Ketu. Ketu is Matsya. Matsya Vatar. Matsya. And Dhumavati. Dhumavati is the body being destroyed into smoke. Ketu is only a body, one body after another. How many bodies we have got? So ultimately all bodies get destroyed. So that's how moksha comes. So that is the Dhumavati Vidya. She is a widow. That means that it is alone that you will get moksha. Father, mother, brother, sister, husband, wife, friend, student, everybody will stay separately. It's a very individual path, alone. Dhumavati Vidya. Think about the higher meaning. Always try to look for the higher meaning of things. Don't look at the normal. The, the other things are meant to divert the mind. Don't get diverted. Stay on the path and you will understand. <coughs> okay? Lagna? Kalki Avatar. And uh, uh, Mahavidya? Bhairavi. Okay, so now you have got the list ready. So, so now we are ready to go into the next slide. Now the things which we are supposed to cover in the next uh, two hours before we break for lunch is reckoning of the Shamsha, how to do the calculations, attitudes and abilities, effects of exaltation and debilitation of planets in the Shamsha, deities of the Dashamsha, houses of the Dashamsha and some significations of planets. I think we can do it if you stay with me. Okay. If you think I'm going very fast, tell me so. Many people are born on the same day, often a few minutes apart. The Rashi, that is the D1 chart, would be very similar and without the Dashamsha it would be impossible to decipher that career. Do you agree with me or you disagree with me on this? You agree on principle, right? And do you want to see a very fine example? I will show it in the next slide. Sometimes people born in different countries, even a few days apart, have a very similar birth charts and yet their lives are very different. Without the D charts, it would be impossible to see differences in their lives. This is specifically taught in Saravali, where Kalyana Vatma points out the importance. He says you cannot even take one step into Jyotish if you don't study D charts. Without the divisional charts, you are blind about the future. There is no way you can make out. So you must study divisional charts in depth. He is very clear. Bhavishya Deepai Samastam. That is the shloka of Sharavali. You can check if you want. And consider these two charts. For example, there are two charts, people I think whom you know about. One is Sanjirat and one is Whitney Houston. Okay? <laughs> We are going to compare the charts. Let's see the next slide. And compare these charts. And, and, and you see. This is the chart of Whitney Houston on the right hand side. And my chart on the left hand side. We both have Pisces Lagna. We both have a Jupiter over there. Rahu is in the fourth house. Sun and Venus in the fifth. Mercury in sixth. Mars in seventh. Ketu exalted in the Aruda Lagna in the tenth house. Saturn retrograde in the eleventh. I have moon in the twelfth. She has moon in the first house. Only one planet difference. What do you say? 
So you think I should start uh, doing pop music instead of uh, <laughs> instead of uh, teaching Jyotish? Do you see my point? All the things you talk about from Aruna Lagna, I mean, to what extent is it really relevant? Lagna, Aruna Lagna, yoga, this, that. This is how we react to things. Of course, there is a very major difference, which is the moon position and the nakshatra position, which you must get into. Oh, I am not saying that this is not relevant. This is very, very relevant. But see the big difference. The big difference comes when we go into D charts. Let's see the next slide. Where we go into D charts. Here you see the dashamsha. It is completely different. I, I have a Pisces rising with an exalted Jupiter in the fifth with Venus. She has Aquarius rising where the focus is totally in the seventh house with Venus and Ketu. Do you see that? It's a huge difference. The lagnas are different, the planets are different. You can see that these are two completely different charts. So the work environment, my work environment and her work environment, my aspirations, her aspirations, my knowledge, her knowledge are completely different when it comes to work. You see the difference? It is so clear. But without this chart, where would you be? Confused. Completely confused. Try to make predictions, they are not working. <coughs> Do you see my point? To make predictions, you need the divisional charts. Don't make predictions without studying the divisional chart. When somebody talks about children, you have to see the Saptamsha. Talks about wife, you have got to see the Navamsha. Don't make predictions about the profession without seeing the Dashamsha. You have to see the Varga charts. Clear? Okay, let's go. Now, how do we look at the Dashamsha? The sun is the significator of all Raj Yoga. All Raj Yoga means all karmas. Karmas happen because of the sun. See, our waking up, going to sleep, our daily cycle, our entire karma, our karmic lives are, are directed by the sun. Do you agree with that? We are here on Sunday today because the sun has made this a day a Sunday. If the sun did not rise this morning, we would be all waiting in our houses for the sun to rise and then come because the new day has not started. So our entire karma yoga in this world which we call Raj Yoga because it is the soul's interaction with the world. To understand the Raj Yoga, read Vivekananda's Raj Yoga. It is because of the sun, as Aditya. Now, what happens is the sun has two major houses that he focuses on. One is the first house, his Atma Karaka. Do you understand the Atma Karaka significator of soul, life, self? So, as the first house, the next he the important thing that he, the son governs is the ninth house, the dharma, the temples, the father, your religion, father. All your religion is, comes from your father, is it not? If your father is a Muslim, you are born Muslim. If your father is a Hindu, you are born Hindu. Does it not come from father? Basic birth religion. Not in Judaism. Judaism comes from mother. Okay, let's say there is a, a, a mother is Jew and the father is Christian. What is the child? Why is not a Christian? See, that's what they say. It comes from the mother, but in reality, it is not. You see, the Christians will not admit it. You see the point. I'm just giving a small example. Will the, will the Christians accept it? No. Why don't they accept it? Because the dharma cannot come from the mother. Dharma cannot come from mother. Dharma. There is a clear saying on this. Sarva dharma pitri pade, sarva sukha matri pade. You cannot get happiness higher than that of the feet of the mother. Nor can you get more dharma than from the feet of your father. Sarva sukha, all the happiness is from the feet of the mother. Matri pade. Sarva dharma, all the dharmas, pitri pade, from the feet of the father. From the feet of the pitris. Let us face it. It is this is the truth of nature. Mother is mother. 
how can i mean you cannot be as comfortable from your heart from a heart level with anybody other than your mother because she has given birth to you she you are a part of her body now if later on the relationship went sour we look at d12 but the truth of that fact remains the same okay clear on this so when we talk of religion a religion can be a mixture basically of both 4000 and 9000 i'm talking of dharma so dharma comes from surya it is more like duty you know dharma is more like duty it is somebody can may not have any particular religion let me see let's say a dog does a dog have a religion no but he has dharma do you see what i'm trying to say you can have dharma without what we call a defined religion dharma is duty what you have to do religion is a means of defining the duty and there is only one dharma which is universal throughout all creatures everybody that is called satya truth that is why it is called satya sanatana it is universal truth as the root of all dharma is universal religion is a mixture of truth social values and so many other things for governing society okay so we are talking of first house and ninth house right did we get the houses right okay now this we arrive at one situation now odd signs or the masculine signs are more selfish self selfish the word selfish i am taking from the word self atma self focused so for odd signs the dashamshas will be calculated from me from them so let us take aries nesha it is a odd sign it has got 10 parts so the 10 parts of nesha tell me the 10 parts of nesha it's an odd sign so it starts from aries so first will be aries then taurus gemini cancer and so on till the 10th which is capricorn Do you see that? <coughs> so first three degrees of Aries is Aries, then three degrees to six degrees is Taurus, six degrees to nine degrees is Gemini, nine degrees to twelve degrees is Cancer. So you take Aries, divide it into ten parts, and give ten parts from itself to the tenth house. Why? Because it's a male sign. It's a self-focused sign. female signs are slightly different than the male signs did you get this principle that i talked about good female signs are different than the male signs the female signs are not self focused they are dharma focused now this is what parashara teaches is it not it sounds bad that means what men are more selfish and women are more duty bound yes is true is true so parashara was so truthful that he didn't hesitate to speak the truth women are very more much more duty bound because for female signs it starts from dharma the priority is dharma not the self see the difference what is the priority is the self the priority or is dharma the priority so for female signs the counting starts from the ninth house and you count from the ninth house 10 signs till the sixth house so can somebody do the counting for me for taurus ninth house is capricorn so that means capricorn aquarius pisces aries like that you have 10 signs did you understand the fundamental difference between the male sign energy and the female sign energy 
It is very important to understand this root difference. Because when you are making, see what happens is, you have one chart, Rashi chart, you press a button in the software, there is a Dashamsha chart. You have forgotten that this Dashamsha was derived from the Rashi chart. And what is the linkage between the two? We need to understand that. We need to understand the energy behind every planet in the Dashamsha. Whether it is a root male energy or a root female energy. For example, if a planet is in Aries in the Rashi chart, that means the root energy is male. Whereas a planet which is in Pisces, the root energy is female. So, the root energy will decide whether you are self-focused or dharma-focused. Because that is the root. That is not, when you see the D10 chart, this is not visible in the D10 chart. So you have to see the Rashi chart, put this in your head and then go to the Shamsha. Okay. So now we can have four possible combinations. What are the four possible combinations? That both are odd signs. The planet, let us say, is in an odd sign in the Rashi chart and an odd sign in the Rashi the Shamsha chart. If that happens, what what do you expect? Whatever whatever decision making he will do as far as that planet is concerned is purely for self. My career, my life, my job, my position, my name, my fame, my report is me. If both are odd signs, it is totally me focused. Completely, it is very high me. If both are even signs, totally dharma focused. He will sacrifice himself for the sake of his duty. Or what he believes to be his duty. That is the dharma. If the Rashi is an odd sign and the Dashamsha is an even sign. He will start off as me but will end as duty. You see, people change between. People change midway, right? Have you seen how people change? You have seen that. People do change, right? <coughs> we start off somewhere and then go somewhere else sometimes. We start off with one principle and then we change somewhere between. That happens when the planet is in an odd sign in the in the Rashi and even sign in the Dashamsha or even sign in the Rashi and odd sign in the Dashamsha. So you see there is a change coming about. The, if it is odd in the Rashi even in the Dashamsha that means he is changing to become more dharma focused. If it is even sign in the Rashi chart odd sign in the Dashamsha the person is changing to become more selfish. Okay. Now we come to another rule, another set. Did you understand these four rules? Right. These are simple rules, but uh, as I don't think I taught this earlier, so right, Frida? Sarah, do you remember hearing this? Never. Right. As I told you, I'm in a different trend nowadays. I'm more revealing than I used to be. Yeah. We are different, so we do more, more dharma oriented. <laughs> right, you are right. It's more dharma oriented and less self interest So, uh, Yuga Rashi is the new concept. The, the, the next concept is Yuga Rashi is well known to everybody. Fire signs are called Satya Yuga. So, the dharma is very strong. Remember, I told you in dharma, the highest rule is Satya, truth. Satya is very strong. Fire sign is very strong. When a planet is in fire sign, it shows you will easily succeed in its directions. If Mercury is in fire sign, tell the person, try writing books, you will succeed. Easily. If 
Mercury is writing books, keeping accounts, accountants, such things. You will easily succeed. If, if Saturn is in a fire sign, you need to pick up something on labor, right? It rules labor, it rules hard physical work where that is involved. You will succeed in those areas. Or working as a secretary, working as an assistant, supporting like a staff function, keeping like a shadow. Saturn is a shadow of the sun. There has to be a big sun and Saturn is supporting. So like working as a secretary. There is a big boss, full of glory and shine, Surya. And Saturn says, okay. Same goes right? so he is supporting it. Saturn can, sun cannot rule without the support of Saturn. Keep that in mind. The sun can never rule if it does not have the support of Saturn. Chanakya Niti says this very beautifully. The first sign of the ending of Raj Yoga is when your most faithful servant shall decide to leave you. The day Saturn turns his face away, your kingdom will fall. If Saturn is favorable, even the biggest of enemies will break their heels trying to push you. You will not fall. Saturn plays a very crucial role. When we read, uh, there is a beautiful scripture on the uh, on Savitri, right? Satyavan Savitri. We are talking about Satya. That's why I am explaining Satya to you. Satyavan Savitri. Who is Savitri? Savitri is the form of the goddess Gayatri in the early morning. Gayatri, you have heard of Gayatri, right? Gayatri, Gayatri mantra. The form of that Gayatri, that goddess, beautiful goddess, early in the morning is Savitri. In midday, she is Lakshmi. In the evening, she is Saraswati. Or Mahagauri, what we call. Savitri. Okay? So am I being... So, Savitri is with Satyavan. Her husband's name is Satyavan, the truthful one. When the truthful one died and Yama came to take him, there's a beautiful story about how Savitri protected her husband. She walked seven steps with Yama. Seven steps. These seven steps are very important. That is why in marriage, the bride and groom take these seven steps because of Savitri's seven steps. Because with those seven, with those seven steps, you can pull the husband back from death. That is called the Gayatri Mantra. So who says that women should not do Gayatri Mantra? In fact, it is originally meant for them. According to the Savitri Vata. That is Vata Savitri Vata and all that. Anyway, so fire science is Satya. A planet in a fire sign, especially in a Dashamsha, is very good. It's a very good planet. It's, it gives you its complete abilities. Even if the planet is debilitated? Even debilitated. It will give you the abilities. Agni Rashi means you will have Satya in that planet. So therefore you will succeed. You are easily able to uphold the dharma of that planet. So that is why you will succeed. Yeah. What about how the fire signs are all odd? Yeah, we will, we will go to that. But the basic thing is that the fire signs give you the power of Satya. By which they will succeed. Water signs are called Dwapara. Yuga. The air signs are Treta Yuga and the earth signs are Kali Yuga. Planet in earth signs are very difficult. You want to succeed in career directions. Let us say somebody wants to become a politician and the sun is in Capricorn. The fellow has had it. I am not saying he will not succeed but the effort that he will have to put in to succeed is phenomenal. Why? Because earth signs are like Shudra. That means you have to work 20 times more to get that little thing done. Okay? It is sheer effort and work. Huge effort has to go in when planets are in earth signs in the Dashamsha. When they are in air signs, money will make the difference. You will have to buy your way through. That means why? Because if there is water science, for example, you will need a teacher to help you, like they are Brahmana Rashis. Okay. 
Now, how to draw a Dashamsha chart? A Dashamsha chart is drawn by finding out the Dashamsha signs that are occupied by the nine planets and Lagna. Okay? Let us say a planet is in four degrees of Aries. Let us say Jupiter is in four degrees of Aries. That means it is in with Dashamsha. Taurus. Taurus. Taurus, right? Three degrees is Aries, three to six is Taurus. So it's in Taurus. So you write Jupiter, Taurus. Like that, for each of the planets you can find out which Dashamsha signs they are in. And so, by placing them in those Dashamsha signs, you can make a new chart, which is the Dashamsha chart. It's like mapping. You are mapping. Each part of the Dashamsha of a sign is being mapped into some other sign. Okay. So, when I, uh, today when I take a little break for uh, finishing my coffee, it will be nice if you actually, uh, if you actually, if you actually spend some time and uh, do the Dashamsha chart calculations for your own chart. The exercise of actually drawing it with your hand and doing it mental cal- mentally calculating, there is something about it. It links something in your head. It causes your Rashi chart and your Dashamsha chart to get linked. So my request is, don't do it with the computer. To take 5 minutes or 10 minutes out and draw your own Dashamshas from your own Rashis. Do it. You have to do it once for your chart. To link it in your head. I used to do this for every horoscope that came to me. Today I just have to see a Rashi chart and I can, it will flip, straight the Dashamsha chart comes in my head. I don't even have to draw it, I can just tell straight away the chart, there's the planets, in fact I start calculating the Arudas and everything mentally. So it is worth it, the reason is, the linkage must happen inside your head. If it does not happen inside your head, you cannot predict. Computer can do the linkage, but that is not going to help you to make a prediction. To be able to predict, that thing has to happen inside your head. Am I, am I being understood? Right. So I am now going to take a tiny, tiny 15 minute break.